This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Watch all of my videos early and ad-free along with my upcoming original series exclusively on Nebula, which you can get access to for $15 a year through the bundle deal at curiositystream.com slash real life lore. Under normal, non-pandemic circumstances, traveling by airplane is, for most people, the quickest way to travel from one point of the world to another, especially when you consider the over 17,000 airports located at various points across the planet. But out of these thousands of airports, there is one in particular that is considered by many to be more dangerous than all the others. There's many different factors that can cause an airport to be considered especially dangerous, like inclement weather, poor visibility, and and high altitudes which can cause the planes to fly differently than under normal circumstances. Most airports that are considered dangerous have one of these factors present at its location that can make landing and taking off quite difficult. But one airport in the world has not one or two of these factors, but all of them and even more. This airport is the Tenzing Hillary Airport, or Lukla Airport in Lukla, Nepal. The airport is located 2,845 meters in altitude and is the primary destination airport for mountaineers to fly into who want to reach the base camp for Mount Everest. Climbing Mount Everest is one of the most dangerous goals a human can do, but just getting there and leaving is itself a substantial risk. The airport was created back in 1964 by Sir Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay who were the first people confirmed to have reached the summit of Mount Everest in 1953. Hillary's intention was to have the airport built on the flat farmlands beneath Everest. But after talking with the farmers, they weren't willing to sell him their land. Hillary determined to build an airport at the base of Everest, then talked with the local Sherpas to see if there was any land that they were willing to sell to him. Fortunately for him, there was some, and they sold him a piece of land that was on a plateau in the mountains for 2,650 USD, about $26,000 in today's money. But lacking any kind of decent construction equipment high up in the remote mountains of Nepal, Paul, Hillary had to come up with another strategy to build the runway. After purchasing the land, he followed it up by buying a bunch of local liquor and gave it to the local Sherpas in exchange that they all perform a foot stomping dance to flatten out the land for a runway. Sort of like a big drunken haka dance to make the land as flat as possible. In the end, the runway came out to be 527 meters long and 30 meters wide, which might sound quite large, but it's really not. An average commercial runway at a regular airport is 1,800 meters in length, meaning that Tenzing Hillary's runway is less than one third of the average length. The runway also has a gradient of 11.7%, which is actually used to help slow planes down as they're landing on the short runway by making them travel gradually uphill. This unusually short runway only allows small fixed-wing short takeoff and landing aircraft and helicopters to land at the airport like the DHC-6 Twin Otter and Dornier Doe 228. And it wasn't even paved with asphalt until 2001. But the short runway distance is just one of the many dangerous challenges that pilots face while landing at Lukla Airport. Since the airport was built on a plateau in the mountains, it means that the north end of the runway faces directly into the face of a mountain, and the southern end dramatically plunges off a cliff 600 meters down into the valley below. A steeper drop-off than the One World Trade Center in New York City is tall. Basically, the airport pretty much looks like the entrance to the lair of a mad supervillain. With the dangerous mountainous terrain on either side of the runway, it also means that there are no go-around procedures for the airport which are normally used when an airplane needs to abort a landing attempt after making its final approach to the runway. So, once a plane begins its descent into Lukla Airport, it has no other choice than to land the plane, regardless of anything else that might happen. And another major problem that pilots face when flying into Lukla Airport is the rapidly changing weather patterns that afflict the area. All of the flights to Lukla Airport come from Kathmandu Airport, which is only 140 kilometers away. The flight time between the airports is only 40 minutes, but in that short time, the weather at Lukla Airport can rapidly change from clear skies to dense fog. In 2011, dozens of mountaineers became stranded in Lukla due to a dense fog that covered the entire area for a whole week. Flights between the airports are available year-round, but are cancelled about 50% of the time due to inclement weather, so it can be quite difficult to actually manage getting a flight in in the first place. 
One of the more recent crashes that took place at the airport was in 2019, when an L-410 Turbolet aircraft with only the crew on board veered off the runway during takeoff and crashed into a helicopter 50 meters off from the runway. Three people were tragically killed, and another five were severely injured. Another accident took place in 2017, where another L-410 Turbolet was performing a freight flight and tried to make a landing during poor visibility, lost altitude from coming in too slow, and clipped a tree with its landing gear just short of the runway. It then hit the ground 3 meters beneath the runway and slid down the slope 200 meters before finally coming to a rest. Two out of the three crew members died from this incident. But the worst crash that happened at the airport took place back in 2008, when a DHC-6 Twin Otter had a similar incident as the previous crash, where the plane came in too low and struck the ground before the runway and also slid down the mountainside 200 meters. 19 people were on board that flight, including the crew, and 18 of them lost their lives. The only survivor was miraculously the plane's captain, and after this particular tragic incident, incident, the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal set much higher standards for pilots who were landing at Lukla Airport. In order to now be authorized to land at the airport today, a pilot must have at least 100 short takeoff and landing missions, with over a year of them taking place in Nepal, and they must have completed at least 10 separate successful landings at Lukla Airport itself with a certified instructor. But even with all of these dangers at the world's most dangerous airport, over 100,000 people still make the trip every year, and only about a dozen major incidents have occurred at the airport since it was built. It may be dangerous, but the men and women who land and take off here are damn good at what they do. But no matter how great a pilot is, nobody is capable of landing something bigger like an Airbus A380 at Lukla Airport. The wing of the A380 is the largest ever produced for a civil airliner, and the total length of it from end to end is nearly triple the width of the runway at Lukla, which is kind of absurd. The process of constructing the absurd A380 is one of the greatest engineering marvels of the 21st century, and you can learn all about the process next by heading over to Curiosity Stream and watching the incredibly in-depth documentary How to Build a Super Jumbo Wing, which discusses the process in the A380. If that isn't to your taste, then Curiosity Stream has thousands of other documentaries as well on every subject ranging from science and tech to history and culture. And now, thanks to Curiosity Stream, when you sign up for them, you'll also get access to Nebula, a streaming service made by educational creators like me where we can safely publish our original, thoughtful content without any fears of getting demonetized or buried by an algorithm like YouTube's. By signing up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula, you are directly empowering real-life lore and dozens of other educational creators you probably know to make awesome, exclusive content that we wouldn't get the chance to make otherwise. Content like all of my own real-life lore videos that go up at least 24 hours early before they do on YouTube and all without any ads or sponsorships. And exclusive content like my own series, Ghost Towns, the first episode of which is live right now where I'll take you on a guided tour across the ghost towns around the Salton Sea, an abandoned post-apocalyptic wasteland that exists in real life in the deserts of Southern California. Best of all though, Curiosity Stream is offering Nebula subscribers 26% off just for you. In other words, that's two fantastic streaming services for less than $15 a year. So go ahead and sign up using the link in the description or by going to curiositystream.com slash real life lore, watch cool content, and support creators by watching stuff we've made just for you. Everyone wins, and as always, thank you for watching.